Hey guys, it's Brittany with Digital Planner Co. And today I'm going to do a quick overview of the latest GoodNotes feature, Elements. GoodNotes is my personal favorite note-taking app for iOS, and the newly released feature titled Elements is perfect for students, avid note-takers, and digital planners alike because it allows you to save frequently used objects such as digital stickers and access them from directly within your toolbar without the traditional copy and paste methods that we've all grown accustomed to. Today I'll be using my iPad Series 7 and my very own Digital Life Planner, which I'll link in the description box below. Use code ELEMENTS to save 40% off my Digital Planner Starter Kit, which includes my handwriting font, over 100 digital stickers, and this all-in-one Digital Life Planner. So the first thing you'll want to do is to make sure that your app is updated to the latest version. If you didn't opt in for automatic updates, you'll want to go to the App Store, search GoodNotes, and then actually click on and update the app. Once the app is fully updated, I recommend closing out all your open apps just to make sure that we give GoodNotes a soft restart. Okay, so now that we're updated, let's jump into GoodNotes to check out Elements, the feature we've all been waiting for. So once you've updated your app, you'll notice a new icon in your toolbar right next to your lasso tool. This is the new Elements feature. When you tap this new icon, a new gallery will appear to the right that'll showcase your most recent elements. But if you haven't yet added any elements of your own, you're going to notice some built-in elements that GoodNotes has provided, which includes collections such as sticky notes, mind map shapes, back to school, text stamps, and everyday stickers. So now that we know where to find our stored elements, let's take a look at how to capture our own and organize them into collections. To save an object as an element, you'll want to select your lasso tool, my personal favorite, and lasso your item. Then you'll just tap and select Add Element. It's so easy. When you add an object as an element, you'll notice a pop-up menu that showcases different element collections. You can tap any of the existing collections to add your element there, or you can click the plus sign to create a new collection. You can also import existing objects such as photos or digital stickers from your camera roll or files within this menu. Sorry Trish, I promise I'll call you back. Make sure to title your collection and then select Create, which is essentially your Save button. If you fail to tap Create, your element or collection will not be saved. And this may be a glitch, but I did notice if I went to save an element into a collection and then I went ahead and titled the collection and then selected Import From to add additional elements to that collection, that when I return back to this menu, my title would be completely gone. So it just appears that if you're adding multiple elements into a collection at once, that you shouldn't title it until all of the elements are imported. Then title and tap create to save. Once you've saved the elements to a collection, any of your recent elements will show up here in this little gallery. You can actually tap on any of the recent elements to add them right into your existing page. And one really cool feature is that even after elements are saved and brought into your existing page, they're still fully customizable and fully editable. If you have your elements icon highlighted in your toolbar and then you tap on it again, a menu similar to your camera roll will appear showcasing all of your recent elements. You'll also see thumbnails of your collections at the bottom of this menu. You can easily select any of the thumbnails along the bottom to view that specific collection and the elements within. And one feature I'm really loving is that you can long press any of the thumbnails and drag them to rearrange the order in which they appear. To edit a collection, just long press the thumbnail and select the red X to delete any individual elements. Or you can delete an entire collection by selecting the three dots and hitting delete collection. You can also do this by long pressing a thumbnail and selecting delete. You will get a pop-up menu asking to confirm your deletion. From this menu, it will always default to your most recent collection. However, the side gallery appears to default to your most recently used individual elements. When the gallery menu is open, you can actually bring elements onto your active page by tapping to select an element or by dragging and dropping. Remember, all elements are fully editable and resizable. From this pop-up menu, you'll notice an icon in the top right corner of the menu which will bring you into split screen mode. It basically gives you a larger version of the elements menu showcasing your saved collections with your thumbnails visible here at the bottom. Just a side note, if you tap to add while in split screen mode, it will only add that element to your recents gallery here in the toolbar. You'll actually have to drag and drop to add an element from the split screen window. As you probably know, you can adjust the size of your active window by dragging the vertical bar from the center to the right. There's another cool feature that I learned from my friend over at Mimi Melly Co that allows you to drag the window on top of your active notebook page into its own overlay menu. To do this, long press the top of the window here at the horizontal bar and then drag the window on top of your open page. 
I personally love this option because it allows you to temporarily hide the menu from your working page simply by swiping right. And then of course you can bring it right back out at any time by swiping left. You can tap the title of a collection to edit or share that collection. I've updated my app once more since the elements update and I noticed that my option to share has disappeared. Though it was a bit glitchy, before my most recent GoodNotes update, which I wish I hadn't done, I was able to share a collection by tapping the three dots icon and clicking share. But more on that in just a moment. At any time, you can close the window by dragging it off of the page or probably more easily by clicking the X in the top right corner to close out the window completely. You've probably noticed that some of the thumbnails have black backgrounds. I've noticed that anytime I capture an element, it will pick up the background color of the page that I'm saving it from. In my personal opinion, the white thumbnail backgrounds do make the elements a little easier to see, but it really boils down to personal preference. If you prefer thumbs with a white background, just make sure to save the element from a page with either a white or light colored background image. When you save an element, it'll actually save at the size ratio from when you originally save it from your working page, which is probably one of the most handy features for the elements which you'll use on a weekly or monthly basis because it'll be perfectly sized for the next use. So this feature will be absolutely perfect for elements such as planner headers, calendars, and daily routine stickers because they'll appear at the size in which they were saved. Even so, once brought onto your working page, they're still completely customizable, able to be cropped and resized. One of the things I'm loving most about the new Elements feature is the ability to easily stash my digital planner covers. Not only can you store an entire collection of covers right within the app, but they're also perfectly sized and ready to go for next time. For me, this is easily one of the biggest benefits of the Elements feature. The option to share a collection appears when you click on the collection title and then click the three dots icon. You'll get the option to share via airdrop, messages, email, and more depending on the settings of your iPad. However, as I said previously, my share button option completely disappeared when I did my most recent update. Now, when I did my original app update to bring in the elements feature, I did encounter an issue when trying to share a collection as a GoodNotes attachment. I went from directly within the GoodNotes app and tried to share via email, which ended up failing, sending only an empty attachment. Next, I tried exiting the app completely and sending via Gmail as a Google Drive attachment. However, I just received an update from my friend who said it again sent another empty attachment. Just a disclaimer that I did advise her to update the app prior to attempting to retrieve them, but apparently it still didn't work. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to successfully share the collection and now my option to share is completely gone. I'm wondering if saving to your files and then sending using your default iOS email app would make a difference. I'm not sure, but drop a comment below and let me know if you've been able to successfully share a collection and if so, how you were able to do it. As a digital content creator and two-time college graduate, I can really see how the share feature could be super beneficial for both students and digital content creators alike. To be able to share formulas and charts between study groups and be able to share digital stickers with giveaway winners and friends would just take the elements feature to the next level. I'm sure with this being a completely new feature that it's just a glitch that'll likely be resolved with the next GoodNotes update. And I'm sure that the GoodNotes app development team is probably already on top of fixing the issue. All in all, I'm super excited that GoodNotes seems to be listening to the needs of their most avid users and even more excited to see features implemented that can make our lives just a little bit easier. I think the Elements feature is simple yet game changing and I'm really excited to see what they come up with next. Well guys, I guess that wraps up this video. If you found it helpful, please be sure to smash the like button and subscribe with notifications to be notified when new content goes live. And stay tuned for a quick flip through of my newly launched daily productivity planner. If you follow me on Instagram, chances are you've probably seen a glimpse of my daily productivity planner, my newly released self-published paper planner. The 6x9 planner is chic, minimalistic, and perfectly curated to help you stay organized with your day-to-day -day planning. The smooth matte finish cover is really nice and soft to the touch, and it's just as aesthetic to look at. Inside, the planner features a weekly overview with weekly goals, a weekly focus, and a section for weekly planning notes and inspiration. Following the weekly into daily pages Monday through Sunday, each day has a section for your daily goal, daily affirmation, checkbox style to-do list, hourly schedule, and a bulleted section for notes and reminders. Behind each weekly section of the planner is two full dot grid pages, perfect for notes, diagrams, calendars, birthdays, and anything you need to jot down. In the very back of the planner, there are two pen test pages that you can scribble on and check your pens, highlighters, and markers to make sure they won't bleed through the planner pages. This planner is available on Amazon for just $7.99 and I've provided a link in the description box below, but you can also find it and my self-published dot grid journal linked in my Instagram bio. 
If you don't already, give me a follow on Instagram at digital.planner.co for more good notes tips, behind the scenes, monthly wallpaper freebies, and more planning related content. The spelling is on the screen. If you stayed for the end of this video, drop the hashtag YouGrowGirl in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. Stay blessed, stay beautiful, and happy planning.